Hello and welcome to a new tutorial coming from modocookie.com. My name is Justin and today I'm going to show you how to create a Starbucks like cup of coffee inside Modo using uh, Pixar's subdivisions. Now most of you probably know that uh, Pixar subdivisions were introduced with Modo 501 but you don't know uh, what's the big difference. Well the difference between uh, standard sub patch subdivisions, uh, which Moto was using before PSub, and the Pixar subdivision, is that the edge weighting weighting works a bit better and smoother than with regular uh, subdivisions. At least this is what I know. Now I, I I won't go into technical details because I frankly I don't know them but this is what I know and Pixar subdivisions work better and at the moment they are an industry uh, standard so we're gonna be creating a Starbucks like like a cup of coffee we're gonna model it then we're gonna unwrap it and then we're gonna create a final uh, image now uh, this is how if you want to see how a, a cup of coffee from Starbucks looks maybe some of you know maybe some of you don't well it looks kinda like this so this is basically what we're gonna create so something like this you can go to Flickr or Google Images or whatever and uh, Google Starbucks coffee and you will see something like this uh, however w we're not gonna be using uh, the Starbucks logo because of course it's copyrighted by Starbucks it's a registered trademark we will be using uh, some textures that I created while uh, I uh, I did this beforehand so here are the textures we have a texture for the cup which is gonna be cup color uh, then we're gonna have a bump for the cup and then a bump for the cap now these are created uh, very very easy also we have the latte uh, which I cannot share because it's uh, it's grabbed from cgtextures.com but you can grab it as well just go to cgtextures.com and search for coffee and you will find uh, this image of course this is a bit modified but you will find this and you can modify it to your needs and use it uh, you will find uh, these three images you will find these three images in the uh, in the source files of the tutorial of course this is for citizen members only so uh, but like I said you can create very you can create them very very easy so this is basically it has a, a, a paper texture on the bottom and then with some colors and logos multiplied on top it's nothing really complicated but we'll get to that so let's get started with our cup now I won't use any reference image I'll just be modeling this from uh, well I'm gonna eyeball it basically so we're gonna start with a cylinder make sure you have it set to 12 sides zero segments and I'm gonna make it 250 millimeters in the X and Z and then I'm going to bring it up kinda like that so we're gonna make a, a medium to small cup of coffee okay so kind of like that now we're gonna get the bottom let me just uh, unhide the grid you can do that by pressing O on your keyboard okay because it's kinda in the way okay and we're just gonna scale this down just a little bit so we have something like that and frankly you can uh, you can go with whatever uh, sizes dimensions you want I'm just gonna go like this <clears throat> okay now we're gonna create the bottom Just gonna tweak this a little bit more. Okay, so the bottom is actually has a small extrusion inwards, kind of like that. Okay, so nothing really fancy. And now I'm gonna make the inside uh, remember this cup is made of uh, paper, so it's usually thin. It's not very thick. 
Okay, now I'm going to bring this down, make sure it's not coming through on this other side. And I'm just going to scale it a bit like that. Okay, and now uh, these paper cups have some sort of a lip on the top here. I'm going to add a loop and I'm going to extrude this to create that lip. Okay, now, uh, now we need to convert this into a subdivision surface. So usually you would press tab, but that converts it to a normal subdivision surface, which is sub patch. Now, in order to access Pixar subdivisions, you need to press shift tab. Okay, so that uh, the the mesh gets converted to a P sub. Now I changed mine to go by default to Pixar subdivisions. So if I press tab, it's straight. It's gonna go to Pixar subdivisions. Uh, you can do that by modifying the shortcuts in the input editor. I'm not gonna go. Um, I'm not going to go over this. I'll probably make a tutorial later on which covers the customization of the Modo interface. Okay, so Shift Tab gets you into uh, Pixar subdivisions. Okay, now uh, we need to we we we've been talking we've been talking that the Pixar subdivisions offer more. Um, well, it's not correctly said complex, but more better edge weighting. So we're gonna discuss that next. So to weight an edge you basically need to select the edge, go over to vertem vertex map and edge weight tool. Now you see here control W uh, that's not by default I've modified it to be on control W by default control W closes the current scene. So I'm going to uh, I I made mine on control W so you can either do that in the input editor again using uh, the form editor as well so you need to find the form edge weight tool copy this command and paste it into a shortcut of your choosing okay so I'm gonna be using my shortcut but remember it's found on the vertex map edge weight tool okay so now we need to uh, we created our basic geometry and now we need to basically add uh, the edge weight. What we would do if we were using uh, standard uh, subdivision surfaces, we would probably go and add some more edges, but not anymore using Pixar's subdivisions. Okay, so we're gonna weight some edges. So I'm gonna select this edge and I'm going to weight it about, um, I don't know, maybe 20%. Okay, so. Another another thing that I forgot to, to mention earlier is that in order for the subdivisions, uh, well, the, the edge weights to show properly, you need to have a subdivision, a, a higher subdivision level than the default two. Now you could counter that by adding more geometry, but I think that using a higher subdivision level actually makes it lighter on our scene. So I'm gonna jump this to four. Okay, and now you can see that the edge weight shows a lot better. Okay, now I'm going to rename this to cup, and I'm going to continue adding my edge weights. And I need to inset that and merge it at the center, or actually join averaged. Okay, and I need to add some more edge weights. So I'm going to add this one at probably 30%. Okay, and this one at around one. Uh, the these cups have a rather smooth surface, so I'm gonna make it smooth. So I'm gonna add a nine percent edge weight, and out at the bottom, I'm gonna go with say twenty, twenty in here, twenty in here. Okay, so something something like that. Let me just see, maybe 20 is a bit too much. Oh, it's actually fine. Okay, so 18 should work. And that's our cup. Now, here comes the probably the most complex part of this model, and that's the cap. 
So we're going to create a new mesh. I'm going to rename it to cap. And I'm basically going to get this bottom cylinder and I'm going to copy it over to the other mesh. I'm going to move it in position. <coughs> okay, and I'm going to scale it to be slightly bigger so that when I apply my subdivision surface, it almost perfectly fits. Okay. Maybe a bit smaller, like that. And now we need to create the cap. So the cap, we're just going to create a bunch of uh, bevels. First, we're going to extrude it. Or uh, actually, no, we're going to bevel it. So we're going to bevel it uh, up, like that. Shift click, inset, like that. Shift click, bevel up, and then inset a bit okay shift click again inset a bit shift click again and down okay so now we're gonna okay now we, now we need to decide where the the hole through which you sip goes so the hole needs to go in two of these, two of these polygons. So we're gonna grab those polygons, we're gonna bevel them, and we're going to inset a little. So just like that. And I think that maybe we need to make this edge a bit thicker. Let me undo that bevel. So this edge needs to be a bit thicker, okay? And now we can insert these. So we're going to insert them roughly like that. And now we're going to switch to our local action center. And we're going to move these edges to make the hole smaller. So we're going to move them roughly 52, or actually 50 millimeters on the X. and minus 13 actually minus 13.5 millimeters on the Y. We're going to repeat the process here. So 50 millimeters by 13.5. Okay, so that's the hole and I'm just going to delete that polygon. Okay, and now if we convert this to a Pixar subdivision, you're going to see we're getting pretty sharp edges all over. Well, that's because the edge weighting it's, it is inherited. So if you copy a polygon that contains an edge with a weight on it, the edge weight copies over. So we need to select all our edges, sorry, edges, and apply a zero edge weight. And that's the result we're getting. But now we're not done with the modeling, so we're going to go in here, select this edge, we're going to move it down a bit, and now we're going to add a loop right in the middle, 50%. And we're going to use the edge extrude to get an indent going in here. Okay, and we're going to move this a bit down. Okay, and now if we apply Pixar subdivisions, we're going to get into the sub D mode and we can uh, start applying some edge weights. But before that, sorry, we, we're still not done with the modeling. Um, we need to delete these edges and we need to grab these vertices, vertices, okay, and we need to move them down about that much. Okay, and now we need to add a new kind of uh, triangulation to this cylinder because the cups have a small indent in here. So we need to change the triangulation so the indent shows better and smooths better. Okay, I know this because <laughs> I've tried before and uh, it's not doable with a standard triangulation and we seems that we have a problem 
Okay, we uh, accidentally, accidentally grabbed an extra vertex that we shouldn't have. So, okay. Actually, better to go to the top view. Oh yeah, it's uh yeah the, 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 we're getting this this problem with abnormal uh, vertex counts because we created the hole onto a different uh, set of polygons. Sorry, my bad. So we need to remove that. Make sure we don't have any leftover vertexes, and we don't. And now we need to go to the top. And we need to create that hole here. So we need to inset, OK, and move this. Make sure you have local action center on. And we're going to move it, like we said, 50 millimeters. So minus 50 millimeters by minus 13.5 millimeters. OK, so 50 by 13.5 five millimeters. It actually needs to be on the minus. Okay. Now we can delete that. And now we can start selecting some vertexes, vertices, whatever. <laughs> Keep messing it up. Okay, so we need to move these down on a oops, this one too. Make sure you're on a normal or actually automatic action center and move that slightly down. And now we need to get some cuts in. And that's it. Okay. And now we can maybe soften this curve here just by pulling that up slightly. Okay, so we get a nice curve in there. And now we need to go ahead and build the inside of this cup. Now, in my tests, uh, I tried using the thicken tool, which would be, of course, the easiest part, but it didn't work and for some reason in this example it works just fine but not really as you can see we're getting some weird geometry going on but that's probably because we don't have any edge weights set so let's go ahead and try to set some edge weights and see if we're getting the same problem. Okay. Yeah, we're we're getting the same problem. So it's I think it's better to just do it as excuse me like I did. It's nothing uh nothing complicated. So we're not gonna see the inside of the cup much, but we know to we need to have a bit of a detail going in there. So I'm gonna remember this is plastic, so it's I'm going to insert that using edge extend and then I'm going to edge extend again bring it up and make sure you don't go through on the other side edge extend again bring it out edge extend again bring it in okay and See, we went over, and now we need to bring it like that, and we can probably go a bit down, doesn't really matter. Okay, and now we can edge extend again, and edge extend again. <coughs> 
like that. And now we need to grab some of these vertexes and move them up to match the. Oops, I think we aren't supposed to move that one. Okay, to match the geometry on the other side. Okay, so something like that. And now we can uh, hit P and just make a polygon. And we can probably move it a bit down. Now we're going to create the same kind of uh, triangulation. We're actually creating quads here, but it's kind of the same thing. Okay, so one more. And we're done with that. And now we need to create the hole, of course, and here. So we need to select same polygons okay go to top and we're going to insert them like that I'm gonna go to wireframe I'm gonna grab these edges and I'm going to move them into position again it, it doesn't need to match perfectly with the other two edges because it's on the inside and it's not gonna be seen very very much. Okay, switch over to shaded and we can go ahead and delete those edges, uh, those polygons, I'm sorry, and now we can go ahead and bridge these. Okay, and now if we convert this to a sub patch, see we're getting some errors. Okay, some are display errors and some are usual errors, so we need to tweak this so it doesn't overlap with the other geometry. Okay, we can probably make this a bit bigger like that. Or actually not. We probably make this one. Okay. And yeah, we should be fine now. And when we're going to add those edges, uh, edge weights, we will be good to go. So we're going to need to add the edge weights. We're going to add them on the inside. And on the inside, I'm just going to add 10 there, uh, probably 18 there. And we need to set the subdivision level to 4 again. Okay, and you can see we're getting a much, much better and cleaner result. Okay, I'm going to add 20 there and 20 there. Okay, 20. Let me just make sure I'm not adding it on the wrong side. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like we need to add a, an edge weight right here. Or what we could try is we can add a bevel on this with or actually no not on this one more like that one but we have a small problem like the distance here is a bit too uh, little we're gonna bring that in a bit okay and we're gonna add some edge weight on these edges Okay, convert it to a Okay, probably thirty percent should be fine. And oh we're missing something right there. 
Okay. And this edge adding stuff is pretty boring, but it will pay off in the end because the model will look pretty pretty good. Okay, so 28 there. And now we need to add a bit of edge weight on this one. Okay, to make that a bit visible. Or you can leave it like that. I add it on uh, on my model, just a bit of edge weight, not too much, maybe 10. Okay, but I think it it actually looks better without this one. Okay, so I'm gonna toggle back wireframe, and let's see. We need an edge weight here of about 27, 28, 10 percent. 10%, 10%, 10%. Okay. And this is looking a bit ugly. Like that. But we need to add some edge weights in there. And. in there okay and let's see if we can fix this can probably bring this in okay and we need to add an edge weight right there not too much we don't want it to go on the other side Okay. Twenty per cent on that one, twenty per cent on that one. And it looks like we can push that one in. It's very, very complicated when you have small distances like this one, like uh, like we have here, because the uh, the edge weight okay tends to um, deform the polygons a bit. Okay, let's take another look in here. That's at twenty, twenty looks a bit off, so I'm gonna leave it at ten. Okay, and I think this whole thing needs to have an edge weight. I can't remember if we set it already. Okay, there we go. And that should probably fix our problems. Okay, but I think something like this looks cool, but let's just stick to the plan. Okay. And you probably need that one to have zero. Okay, so I'm going to call it done, just like that. <coughs> and I'm going to unhide my cup. Make sure it fits. It actually needs to be a bit bigger than the cup. So it fits like that. 
Okay, and the cup looks like it's a bit too big, too tall. I'm going to shorten it out. Okay, now that one looks, I think it looks much better like this. Okay. And now we're going to create the coffee. And we're going to do the same trick that we did with the cap. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to move it up about there. I'm going to scale it just till it protrudes the the, the cup surface a bit and then I'm going to get a few insets in to mimic the liquid surface okay and now make sure you remove uh, all the edge weights Okay, and if we switch over to Advanced OpenGL and remove the wireframe, you see that looks pretty nice. Okay, now let's get over to the UV tab and unwrap what we created. So I'm going to delete every UV map that was created and I'm gonna start with the cup but first I'm gonna save my scene okay so the cup what we're interested in is the uh, the main label thing the, the outside so we're gonna hide the inside for now we will unwrap that too but we're gonna hide it for now okay and we're gonna unwrap the outside so what we can do we can select that edge and then select the seam and just go go over to the top and then select unwrap and it's going to unwrap it very good now we need to see where the top is that's the top we need to rotate this. Okay, and we can fit the UVs. And now, if we were to uh, paint the texture for this object inside Moto, we wouldn't bother. We wouldn't be too much concerned concerned too much about the uh, UVs, about how they look. But since we're going, well, since I used Photoshop, I was concerned, and I uh, went out and straightened these uh, UVs. Now this is pretty simple you just have to follow some basic rules. Now when you straighten something on the vertical make sure you keep the same direction so if I'm straightening them down I'm going to keep the same direction throughout the mesh. Okay so that way I won't get the the stretching will be kept to a minimum and you can see the stretching by seeing the color of the polygons now this green here is probably zero stretching now you can toggle that by going to options and show distortion now of course this won't be perfect like it, it won't uh, be zero stretching but it will be uh, good for now now however on the vertical uh, you need to keep the direction until you reach the center of the object. I'm going to straighten those on the right to the right, okay, including the center line, okay, and those on the left to the left. So this way the stretching is kept to a, a minimum, okay. Let me just finish this. Okay. Uh, whoops. And 
like that. But actually, okay. And you can play around with these till you get an even color of that green. Now blue means they are overstretched, that they're bigger, and red means that they are uh, smaller than they should be. Okay, and looks like these are a bit bigger. Okay, and these are, well, you need to select the ones on the top first. Okay, looks like these are a bit smaller. Okay, and these are smaller as well. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's okay like that. Uh, the bottom. I uh, won't be too much. I won't be bothered bothered too much about the bottom. Probably gonna leave it like that. Okay. And now we need to unhide the inside and hide what we did so far. And we're gonna repeat the process on the inside. Only that this time we're going to leave it as is. Okay, so unwrap and we're going to unhide this. We're going to rotate this just so it's straight. We're going to put it over here. Make sure that it's fit the UVs. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's overlapping with the other polygons because they will all have the same texture of paper on them. Okay, and that's the whoops, that's the cup. So I'm gonna rename this cup. And the cap, I'll do a very very simple unwrap. I'm just gonna project from view, project from top, and I'm going to fit the UVs, and I'm gonna call this cap, and the coffee same. Thing. Okay, project from view, fit UVs, whoops, rename, coffee. Okay, so now UVing is done. We're gonna jump over to texturing and rendering this out. Okay, so now since my images that I created were created um, based on the one that I did I will use uh, on the cup that I, I previously did I will use the cup that I previously did but the, uh, the the process should be the same so there's not a very big difference between them okay or uh, for citizen members what you can do is you can use CG coffee start and you will basically get this scene Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I will group my objects. I'm going to rename this coffee. And then I'm going to select duplicate hierarchy. Uh, if you select simple duplicate, it will only duplicate the folder. And then I'm going to, in item mode, let me unhide my grid. Okay, in item mode, I'm going to move this one aside. Okay, I'm going to to rotate it, oops. Uh, okay, I'm gonna rotate it just like that, and then I'm gonna get my cap. Okay, I'm going to get my cap, and I'll move it so we can see the inside and mainly the coffee that's inside and I'm just gonna place it uh, okay so I'm just gonna place it by the cup okay and I'm gonna switch to a local action center since I want this one to be like this 
and then I'm going to grab my item and go to item mode, grab the other coffee, and I'm just going to rotate it a bit like that. Make sure it's not intersecting with the other one. Next, I'm going to set my camera, and I think it. I think I'm going to leave it just like this. Okay, but I'm like sure I'm going to go to half HD. Okay, and maybe this one can be rotated just a little bit, so we can see the whoops. Uh, so we can see the 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 indent on the cup that reads little cookie, of course. Okay, and I'm gonna leave my camera just like this. Okay, and now let's create the studio. I'm gonna switch over to perspective. Uh, on a new mesh, I'm gonna create a plane. Okay, I'm gonna center it. And in edge mode, I'm just gonna extend this edge up and extend it again and over our cups. And then I'm going to bevel those edges so I have a smooth transition. And I'm going to go with four around this level. Okay, and I'm going to call this floor. I'm going to create a new mesh and for our purposes we're going to be using two uh, luminous polygons. Okay, I'm going to use one right here okay and I'm gonna use one on top of my cups okay just like that and you can further refine this if you want okay now I'm gonna switch over to my camera again I'm gonna go over to the render tab and we need to remove our directional light and because um, luminous polygons don't give the same s shadows as uh, usual lights in Moto, uh, we are going to be using another light we're going to be using an area light which we will match to the camera to react uh, to act as the camera flash now this is very very simple to do in the animate tab in item mode you select the area light and then the camera and then you on their match and align you click item position and you can see it moves the area light to the camera and then again select the area light using shift or control select the camera and match item rotation and there we have <coughs> excuse me our area light matched to the camera's position and rotation. We're just going to move it a bit up and we're going to toggle off simple shading and we're just going to increase the radiance to 5. Okay, let's see the width to 1.2, the height to 1.2. Okay, and now we can go over to the render node, toggle global illumination, change ambient intensity to 0, and then in the environment we need a a uh, constant color of 0.75 it's a pretty neutral gray and you can even go lower if you want I'm gonna leave it at 0.75 and next we need to assign our materials so I'm gonna first assign materials to my light and then we'll talk about the textures so I'm gonna assign my main light I'm gonna call this main light and then the top light Okay, and I'm going to move them both above the base shader and I will add a shader for both of them and I'm going to toggle off cast and receive shadows. I'm going to duplicate the shader and move it to the other light. So the top light needs to have zero diffuse, zero specular with luminous intensity of two. Okay, and I'm going to give it a slight uh, sorry, slight cool color, so tinted a bit blue, and then the main light. Actually, this one needs to be 1.7. It's a bit too bright right now. Okay, the main light is going to have an intensity of three, with 
a warmer color like something like this brown but not too light okay okay next in the render tab we're gonna change our anti-aliasing anti to 16 samples filter to Mitchell um, rate thres threshold to 0 0.05 and make sure you have indirect bounces set to 2 so we get a, a lighter scene and the, pretty much the rest is default now the main light I think needs to have like 2.5 and a bit more saturation in it okay so something like that now we're gonna go ahead and assign the materials for our coffee and we did a bad move. We should have assigned the materials and then duplicate this, but no problem. Not too many items in there. So we're gonna go ahead and select the cap and assign cap. Okay, go in here. Cap. Then the liquid. I'm gonna call this coffee. I'm gonna do the same here and the cup it's going to be cup okay and now in the shader tree I'm going to make this 100% diffuse and I'm gonna copy it and paste it to the other materials okay and don't we don't forget the floor okay Switch over to the render tab. And now the floor, 100% um, diffuse is okay for the floor, but uh, make sure you have conserved energy on. But for the cup, the, the cap, I'm sorry, we're not going to be using 100% diffuse because it would be too much. So we're going to be using something like 75 or maybe 85. Or you could use 100% uh, diffuse, but uh, with uh, more neutral uh, gray color like 0.75 let me go like that okay so just so it's white but not that white okay so we're gonna start with the cap since it's the most easier the most uh, easy of them so we're gonna give this a reflection amount of 1 with a Fresnel of 25 and blurry reflections on with 20% uh, roughness and reflection raised to 128 or actually you can leave them at 64 since the cap is not that complicated and then we're going to use subsurface scattering for the cap since it's uh, the, the, the cap is made out of uh, some translucent plastic so we're going to go over it and set the subsurface amount to 100% and the subsurface color to something like orange so something like that just to give it a bit of more a uh, bit more texture we're going to change the scattering distance to 2 millimeters and the front weighting should be set to 30 millim uh 30 uh, percent okay and that gives a bit more texture to our cup uh to our cap and let's not forget the uh, the bump we're going to go in here we're going to grab the cap bump I'm going to drag it to moto and I'm going to set it to be uh, I'm going to toggle off anti-aliasing. I'm going to set it to a UV map, and the UV map needs to be cup. Okay, and I'm going to set this to bump. Okay, so we're getting something like that. The bump is okay at 5 millimeters, and we're going to jump over to coffee. Now, the coffee is pretty simple. We're going to grab this latte image, we're going to drag it in here gonna gamma correct it and turn off anti-aliasing and the UV map is supposed to be liquid okay see and of course we need to uh, to duplicate this one and set it to luminous color and we're gonna give some luminous color to that so point to something really really uh, small it also helps with color bleeding. Now if we want to check that up close we can duplicate the camera switch over to camera 2 and we can zoom in here and it looks pretty good. We can go over to the UV tab 
to make sure this is properly set and it is so I'm gonna leave it like this and for the material we're gonna add just a bit of specular maybe 5 or 10 percent conserve energy on and the roughness should be 35 we're not gonna add any reflection since we're not really interested in that and now for the cup it's this one is pretty simple again uh, we're just gonna switch over to our main camera and we're gonna drag this these two images cup color and cup bump okay oh and we need to have a different material for the inside so actually forgot about that so I'm gonna go over to cup okay and I'm going to select my Uh, my inside I need to hide this liquid and the cap. Okay, so I'm gonna select my inside, which is gonna be that one. I'm gonna call this inside, and I'm gonna do the same for the other cup. And I'm gonna call it inside. Now remember the inside is unwrapped so we will be using the same image but we will be using different material settings. So the cup, we need to set the cup bump to bump. Okay and the bump distance should be set to 3 millimeters. Okay the fuse amount should be 100% and this one needs to be gamma corrected. Okay, and the UV map needs to be cup. Okay, and now as you can see we need to rotate the second cup of it because I don't want to show the same image. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that and I'm just going to get the cup and I will just rotate it a bit. maybe like that okay you can uh, go ahead and modify it how you see fit okay and the material for the cup will have conserve energy on we will have two percent reflection okay with forty percent for now blurry reflection on with 128 rays since it's a pretty big uh, surface and roughness amount should be 55% and maybe we have too much reflection going on so 1.5 should be okay okay let's see the bump turn off anti-aliasing and we can switch over to camera 2 and we can go close to see if we get the bump and we do get the bump but let's see if we put it to 5 millimeters Let's try to gamma correct this and see if we get a better result. And it's not that much of a difference. Let's overdo the bump a bit. Okay, let me just check that I'm using the correct image. And I am. And the bump is coming through, but. I think we maybe need to go in here and oh the UV map for the bump was not set for the cup okay so now we're getting bump so we need to turn this back down to three millimeters and you can see we're getting the bump okay we can switch over to camera one <coughs> Okay, and now we need to duplicate this bump and we need to assign it to the inside material. Okay, maybe go to get the Fresnel a bit down, it's too high. And we're gonna set this to bump again, three millimeters in here, 
and we will use let me just go in and check this up close okay and we need to make sure it has the correct UV map and it does okay and three millimeters bump should be good okay and we want to have conserve energy on we want to have 0.5 reflection with 20 percent Fresnel blurry reflection on with 30 percent 64 rays is okay and I think we are done now one last touch uh, so that we don't have to render out an ambient occlusion output we will get some uh, the occlusion shader from the processing tab okay and we're gonna change the spread angle to 75 percent uh, we're gonna leave the type to uniform the occlusion range to 24 and we're gonna change the distance to 100 mm uh, whoops 100 millimeters and we're gonna set it to be multiplied and we're gonna set this opacity to 70 60 5 or 70 something between that and now we're done let me double check the render settings okay they look okay and we can go ahead and hit render thanks for watching and I hope you liked the tutorial uh, please feel free to comment and stay tuned for more tutorials coming from motocookie.com